Hi, Brigitte. Hey, Sandlis. <laughs> um, it's my pleasure to interview you for my blog. And uh, the first question, which I usually ask uh, to other composers, uh, what is uh, good and uh, bad musical composition for you, right? How you, how you, how, how you can say, okay, this is good rhythm. <laughs> the kind of quality. So actually, but for I you, mean, right? Yeah, for for me, um, it's always about I'm I'm always checking the situation. So what kind of situation is here presented musically, uh, or is there any situation? And situation means for me really a kind of a plot. Yeah, and it can be a musical task like I don't know. Uh, I want to go inside a chord. I want to you know. So something the motivation for writing a piece. Uh, this is for me very very important that I can. Uh, find this somehow when I listen to a piece and then of course uh, I'm very into sound I mean of course composers are into sound but uh, but for me it's always um, uh, a big question how does something sound so for example when somebody says um, yeah I, I want to mirror a special situation a digital situation so I choose a lot of Game Boy sounds or I don't know uh, let's say trash sound something like this I, I'm still uh, listening to it and and for me it's important that it's well made you know that there is a musical approach how to bring these sounds together even if it's trash or even if it's uh, it should be dirty or something uh, this can be made musically or not musically so um, so I'm really checking about the dramaturgy so how are sounds connected how is the dramaturgy of a piece and the last thing is, of course, I mean, we are calling it in Germany Handwerk uh, or in the, the German term of it. So um, that's very, uh, that's very complicated to discuss it. Uh, when is, is it some, can something be art? So if it's well, well made, but there are um, definitely some skills also in instrumentation and things that you see is this motivation that was formulated. Uh, um, is this uh, uh, was it managed to bring it into the instrumentation into the into the music and instrumentation doesn't mean uh, only like instruments no like how to put cello and flute together but uh, also the instrumentation of the meaning the instrumentation of the setting of the stage of um, yeah of these things so actually these are the three things I'm I'm always interested in and um which was the last piece which you, uh, which uh, which corresponds to uh, to this big uh, to, to the three criteria which you have heard the last piece um poo hard to say i had to say i i must say the first time i listened to the to the piece uh, the tuba solo piece of nono for example uh, this touched me a lot because you have this big instruments and the very very high sounds and the player has to be has to work so much physically to to get these sounds which are really not beautiful in a way of beautiful made but the kind of situation that there is sitting somebody it was in a very very small space with this very big instrument uh, causing this very tiny tones very high um this this touched me a lot where i thought this is a situation which is very uh, so full of meanings no? and so open to project uh, my own thoughts or ideas into it. Mm -hmm. And um, what is uh, what is uh, your musical signature or mu musical uh, or ideas which you came you know, more often you know, you, um, develop in your in your pieces. I think in the in the focus is really this kind of referential thinking, so that I'm composing in references uh, and in systems of references, and this is a bit different from only saying uh, I use quotations or something like this because uh, when I'm composing, then somehow um, I always feel that we are somehow in a network of a lot of meanings which are surrounding us, and some of them we know we are so socialized in in special environments, and some of them we don't know. And um, and when I'm composing, there is very often that uh, like music um, fragments that, that things are coming to me or that they are around because I'm 
I have to think I have some special associations or um, into things and they can be a possibility references to enrich a situation or to give them another meaning or to also to tell something with music because music is abstract by itself but as soon as we work with meanings um, we can yeah we can tell something about special situation on the stage so in working with these systems I really do in a I would say in a virtuous way so it, because um, it uh, it really makes uh, it, it's, it's I, I really enjoy it so forming systems of this and trying to create a kind of surface with um, with a lot of meanings that can be connected in different ways. And for example, in my last uh, music theater, I also um, refer to songs which are local, so which are uh, locally connected to the area where it was performed, like an Aust Austrian folk song. Uh, but this song is not only connected to the area, it's also connected to myself because my parents were singing it very often when they were together. And then it comes in a special situation where a mu musician of the uh, ensemble says goodbye actually or goes in a situation of loneliness and these are moments which i really like to to combine so these different perspectives let's say of of a material mm -hmm. and the second thing i really like to do is also that's connected to to this um making instrumentations or or um, creating my own musical score from a material. Um, also, because I think uh, this is something that Boris Groys says, no, there is nothing really new, um, new under the sun. So uh, actually, things are new because we give them a new meaning or we change the meaning of something. That's also the, the idea that Duchamp already had like 100 years ago. No? It's, um, but still, I think that there are some developments in the technology that can change, of course, the way we are composing and the way um, we are we are trying to show a, a, a special material. Um, I have seen that uh, in your uh, in your webpage that you have developed uh, the concept social composing. Can you just? Uh... Uh, elaborate on that what is that and... it was actually um the moment when i had to write a piece for flute so a friend of mine a flute player daniel agi he asked me to write a piece for flute and i and i, I thought i cannot write another piece for flute i mean <laughs> that is so cliche in contemporary music a piece for flute solo so i was thinking how how to use um this instrument in a in another way and then um or to ask the question, what what is the meaning of the flute in our social life? Let's say so, uh, and then I, I was uh, just googling on YouTube things about flute and flute players and what are people doing with the flute, and I just I explored this kind of covers, so which are made for different instruments: flute cover, piano cover, <laughs> voice covers. Um, so people are just playing their favorite song with their own instrument. And they are playing like a karaoke, like playback. And somehow I um, I started to talk to these people, to write them, to ask them if I can use their material. And, and there are coming up um, conversations. And I felt that there is a kind of a social aspect in this kind of composing. It's very different from uh, I'm at my desk and doing these things by myself and <laughs> grabbing somehow in my brain so for ideas. It's we like looking around and going into communication to the people and seeing how the instruments are used in our social life. And then I started to, to write about it, no? about social composing, to do some research, to think um, about different forms of it. So uh, actually the, the term social composing just means that we are working with a kind of material that comes from a social media platform, but it can also mean so in this way for example in the public privacy series there is um there are two processes so the one is the communication and the other process is i take the material and then i'm working by myself again so having this moment but there are also um ways of working on a let's say on a digital platform together developing something 
Um, this is another form of a social composing. For example, what comes up now is like doing Mozilla Hub spaces, yeah, where you go into a space which allows you to work with different composers, for example, together or musicians or to create rooms which are perceived digitally. Um, and these are, or let's say, these are the, the two main forms, no? how to to work. And then, uh, yeah, the more social media platforms or technology raise up, the more you can go into it no? and think about, uh, we can think about NFTs, we can think about um, virtual reality composing, which, which have this social aspect as well. Um, so I think this is a term which can change a lot through the technologies we use. Mm -hmm. okay. and and yeah and then it's the question so how the, are these pieces performed so what i just described is uh okay you have a digital platform but in the concert it was for me a little bit the idea that you bring kind the kind of living room into the concert space because on youtube you have all these performers they are recording themselves at home and the more videos you see of this, the more you start to look in the environment, no? how are these people living? Um, and then you see many, many big differences, not only in the um, in the social, let's say social class where somebody is coming from and you can see it immediately if it's a big house, a villa-like, or if somebody is, I don't know, in a very small and tiny room with nearly no furniture. And uh, the second way is how our people presenting themselves in social media so this can generate also a musical form no because we have the form in the concert so musicians are coming in we are giving applause <laughs> of course there are also different variations of this but in social media we also have some rules or forms no? how people are presenting themselves so um this is also a kind of a statement no is somebody going there some are playing in their pajama at home at the desk they don't give a shit on it and others are really um thinking about how to present myself here and and using the mirror or the screen as a stage and yeah these things i thought could be very interesting to bring together so this mm -hmm. is why i i made also the serious public privacy which was actually the artistic uh it's a kind of artistic research, so I would say. But I have noticed that uh, you use uh, quite a lot in your uh, in your works uh, technology, right? Yes, I really like um, like to use technology as a kind of augmentation of the instruments of our uh, performance of our body. Um, it's for me very natural, actually, to think about it. And in the last time, I explored also three D sound um it was actually a pandemic thing so which brought me into 3d sound because i was working for the archipel piece the the piece for dancers and musicians and choir with a choir from norway which couldn't travel and i really really wanted to have the choir on stage with the musicians performing so um i got into this 3d sound technology that allows us to create sound objects in the space. So not only a sound is coming from a loudspeaker and we can say, ah, this loudspeaker has this voice, but to say also this voice is really in the middle of us. So it's in the middle of the audience. It's locally, um, um, yeah, you can localize it in the space um, at a certain point. Um, as well as uh, now I'm exploring a lot of um, the terms of artificial voices. So, and AI voices, voice clonings, um, because voice is something that is very important for my pieces since a long time. So working with voice and yeah, exploring the, the, the possibilities we have. So you are, uh, so, you are uh, so you like in your works to to exploit uh, opportunities of emerging technologies, right? Yes, because uh, I, it, in the end, I always think um, the most beautiful moment is when all this technology disappears on stage. So when you don't see, ah, there is a camera and ah, there's the screen and, and now I hear the live electronic effect. So this is always a bad sign when we think about it. So <laughs> I always try to, to let it disappear and to to grab for this, uh, for the reason why why are we using it? So, for example, um, now I work I worked with the uh, voice clonings. So um, 
I uh, try to make uh, voice clones or artificial voices, AI voices, which are not so technical as we know it. So normally we are used to to have these voices around us and navigation systems, Alexa. So they are working for us. They are slaves, actually. So these voices are slaves for us to, to let us feel more comfortable, to have a more easy life. And uh, I really like to give them yeah, a kind of a body, so a kind of entity. And so I worked with voices, which I cloned from musicians. I asked uh, Dietmar Wiesner from Ensemble Modern to to scream for half an hour for me, uh, to read a text screaming, to have an, an artificial voice, which is screaming, which I can form afterwards. So to fill, yeah, actually to feed a, a AI model with this screaming voice, and then I can give this voice other texts and, and messages. And I work with voices which are stuttering, which I manipulated a little bit that they are, um, they are not really clean, that they're whispering, that they are uh, that they are lost, perhaps, that they don't know what to say, and they are bored, or they are <laughs> they get somehow human, let's say, behavior. Yeah. And um and also to to say I work with a clone of somebody, not with the original voice. So this music musician is on stage, so he's there, he could he could talk, but he doesn't. So he um these are things that I uh, think are very interesting. It's not about the technology by itself. So it's always about how to use it in a meaning that could be a bit strange for us also, no? Or where we have to get used to, to it. And do you code as well or, or? What? Do you call it what? Uh, do you code, right? Do you write uh, codes or programs, software? No, I'm, I'm working with, uh, with uh, companies together or with, um, uh let's say yeah with with technology where i can just feed so coding it by myself i think it would take too long but um i really like to so now i'm working with a company from from the ukraine for a next uh, project uh they are very very advanced in this kind of singing voice uh yeah, yeah singing for artificial voices and um so it's more like uh, working with them, asking them what is possible and trying to develop it with them together. And I'm also working together with the programmers, um, which helped me to realize the ideas. Um, just because um, for me, it's very important also to bring, yeah, to, to work actually with the, with the instruments in the end, you know, or with the scores or with the music. And uh, I just personally don't like to spend so much time on programming. <laughs> Or to because there is still a lot of time with mixing. I I use a lot of time for mixing my my electronics and um really to bring it into space. So also when I work with 3D sound, I do the mix by myself. And um yeah, I like to keep on keep my eye on these things. But it's uh it's always yeah I really love this kind of collaboration to think about it because it's for me new and for the others it's also new to work in a in a kind of experimental way with it. Uh, and what is like a most uh, frequent uh, technological artifact, I mean, softwares or hardwares, that you most frequently use in, um, for your works? Mm. So Max. I use, uh, uh, Max I use sometimes, um, I use uh, different DAVs like Ableton, Cubase or Logic. Um, sometimes I work with um, specialization programs also with uh, programs from uh, from the IRCAM, like uh, AudioSculpt, it's an old program. I really love it. I really love the quality. Um, and uh, yeah, with all kind of uh, synthesizers as well. So yeah, and now next also, so what I'm doing now is also, yeah, using these softwares for uh, AI, um, yeah, voice generation. Um, I noticed uh, and saw that your uh, that, that your piece is, is not only like uh, technologically loaded, but as well as uh, multisensorial, right? So that you 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 like to mix uh, uh, genres, you, you you like to add visual aspects or that or performative aspects. In your works. How it uh, how how you came to to this approach? 
I think the the main thing is always to think about how can I um, how can I tell actually to say very simple tell a story with music. So, and uh, it was from the beginning on that I was interested in the buddies that are playing in the performers uh, to ask also the question mm, what kind of projection surface is this person <laughs> for me and for the others uh, who is this person what is how can I write something for this uh, yeah for the special special person as well um, yeah, and always to say, to think about the environment. Perhaps it's also because I'm of this millennial generation, you know, where uh, I'm used to to think in in networks or in rhizomatic structures, or let's say in in links, perhaps, <laughs> so, to to have always the connection between different things. And as soon as I can add something to music, I I open up the the uh, field of of meanings actually and so my goal is always to create something where you can project a lot of things so i have to think about a piece which i premiered in donna eshing in, uh, in a few years ago with osama modern and there it was really about projection surfaces and it was so funny because afterwards a lot of people came to me uh telling me things that they saw in the piece which i never intended for example the musicians they were the eyes were closed, so they had um, sunglasses and they couldn't see anything. They were blind, and the audience has to bring them had to bring them on stage, otherwise the piece couldn't start. So they were really helpless, standing around, having a little map in their hand where they have to be positioned, and then the audience had to help them. And afterwards, for example, a pair, a very old couple, they came to me and said, "Oh, we are so thankful that you did something for the older people and for the people who are not." Uh, uh, who really need help so it was nice to see this in the piece which was never my intention actually you know to but but my intention was to create a situation where there is a, a really deep need so in the beginning so and the helplessness and so there's somebody has to be done you know? and creating these situations uh it's not possible to do it only with music it's perhaps possible to do it with music and text or voice but um, uh, it always needs a special situation, and I'm interested in how to use um, music in a yeah in a kind of social way. So, I, I when I was younger, I came to music actually um, through the electronic music, and uh, so I was um, listening to drum and bass a lot and went for parties and yeah growing up in this scene and at the same time i was learning piano and was uh, <laughs> playing mozart and beethoven so these two worlds were always together but uh both of them had for me a very important meaning so the this kind of going in a club and going dancing was a kind of a world how where you can just dive in with many people around and you can be alone like in the vienna coffee house you can be alone but you can have a lot of people around you which are sharing the same uh, the same experience and the classical music was always this moment where I can dive in and where I'm alone by myself so without anyone around so a very individual experience and uh, I think these two things were very very important poles so um, yeah cr creating these kind of situations it's uh, I, I really need others others for this so it can be other media, but also other people. That's why I'm always uh, also working in teams, you know, with um, even with programmers or with uh, virtual, not virtual, with visual artists. Um, uh, I re yeah, I really like to bring this together. Got it. Got it. And how your music changed in the uh, last ten years? Um. So what changed is that I got I went more into bigger productions. So in the beginning, I was writing a lot for ensembles and writing like this solo pieces, ensemble, also orchestra pieces. Um, and my favorite group is actually a group of ten to fourteen people. I think it's <laughs> sometimes I think it's because I grew up in a family with ten kids. So some of this ten, eleven, 12, so that's a uh, my favorite group. But um, I. Um, 
I switched more and more into into bigger stage productions. So I was working with my uh, colleague Stephanie Tiersch, who's a choreographer, and we did uh, this Bilderschlachten, this was for orchestra and dancers and string quartet. And now we did this Archipel together, also for over 50 performers on stage and a big architecture which was built for it and um, also into music theater. So I went more into this kind of thinking in productions, you no know? more into, yeah, writing this, let's say everyday business uh, pieces, but more into, um, yeah, a bigger production, which, which also needs needs more time to to do. And also I got more into installations, which are uh, connected to this, I think. And I really like this idea of creating, uh, yeah, creating a space with an installation or with a full evening piece where you can where you can step in. And I really like also the kind of um, working process for these, uh, let's say, larger productions where you need more time. Mm -hmm. And what triggered, right? Uh, what was the trigger for this change? Mm. I don't know, somehow it was for me something, yeah, a little bit like uh, this feeling when you when you cooked a big meal and it's over and, and, and you ate it in 10 minutes. So, you know, there's a lot of effort. I mean, composing means so much effort and you put so much effort in it uh, and then you have a 10 minutes piece and it's over so quickly. Um, and somehow developing ideas really with a team. So it makes sense when you when you have a, and you have a bigger time really on stage uh, also to explore the things, to have uh, another kind of rehearsal. So it doesn't make sense to rehearse uh, four weeks for a 10 minutes piece, no? Yeah. But but having really, um, it was really the, the moment when I, when I came closer to the kind how dancers are practicing and that they are spending so much time in the dancing room and that they are developing the piece together. I mean, I'm a composer and I will, I, I never understand my I, I will never understand myself as somebody who's developing uh, so my my pieces with other people together in a, a kind of community. Um, or let's say we are um, we are composing together because I need these moments when I'm alone and composing and bring the the really the pitches and the sounds together because uh, because there I'm I'm also kind of perfectionist I, I'm never happy with only improvising so uh, but I really like the process so this moment of um, yeah people are coming together you can really you get to know to them you get to know to their qualities you get to know to their other sides you know what happens when yeah to, to find also um, uh, very weird moments huh? how how dynamics in a group can also uh let something appear that was not visible before mm -hmm. and i really love this processes and um this was a very important trigger also and what is uh, your process of composing how you start and what kind of stages and you go through i always start with reading i would say reading, <laughs> with, uh, reading yeah i really like reading uh um so i know for melancholia um, I was doing it together with Moritz Lobeck, a dramaturg, and we were reading a lot of texts about melan melancholy. So there's a topic I'm interested in, and then it's really about how is this uh, topic reflected uh, in different times. For example, how in the, I don't know, 500 years ago, 400 years ago, how could it be in the future? How was it reflected in art and, and philosophy? Uh, I really like to get an overview to also to know where where I want to go with it no sometimes you know something is triggering you and and but you don't know why so I have to find it very often uh, and and go on a kind of journey to find the reason why something is uh, triggering me and um, and but sometimes there is also it can also come from music that I listen to or sounds that I that I came across it can also be a um yeah a kind of a topic or in a wish like now for example i have really the wish to do uh something with complete without um 
visual aspects so to make a show for absent voices let's say or absent bodies <laughs> uh, working without human beings on stage um this can be a wish and then uh then i start to look okay where can i find references to this so uh, did it happen before in art that there was a music without people so where does it come from what could it be so um so i really like this kind of uh research also before i go into composing and uh, actually this takes normally more time than the composition by itself so the research for melancholia was about one year we also published articles about uh, we started with grief and then we came to melancholia um we we published articles i really like to write them about the topics i'm interested in it was the same with social composing for example uh, with the public privacy series these kind of uh thinkings then about a topic um it's a kind of side product you know which which comes out then okay research again then what next research and then um and then i really go into into try normally i i have uh, already things in mind so what regarding the sounds so I have always a feeling how some uh, for the situation. I know the feeling, uh, yeah, how the sound feels, and then I'm I'm searching for the sound. <laughs> it's always this this way actually. Um, uh, there are then there are two ways. Sometimes I work with the electronics first, and uh, the electronics uh, bring me to the instrumental part. Uh, this I love a lot because it always uh, brings me to musical textures which I perhaps didn't think about it before and sometimes it can be the other way around that I have an idea for an acoustic instrument let's say and then I'm looking for the electronics to augment it or to um yeah to work with it and actually then it's always um uh I have a, a, a let's say a, a vague idea you know of a form and the form itself, it it uh, it comes when I'm doing it. So I really like to have then I don't know to step by side. For example, when I melancholia, I was writing a solo part for cello, and then uh, it was about the three norns actually. In the videos, I, I had the idea of having, or let's say, an idea of somebody who's working very hard on something. So the cello part was very complicated and uh it's really, yeah very quick tempo and then in the video you have the opposite you have three women which are very big and they are the like the three norns the uh, three godnesses uh which have the destiny of the um of the human beings in their hands so they have, they have like little textures and they are um they are eating it instead of spinning it <laughs> Uh, and they have, have do very slow moments, like looking on this person, like, ah, you little guy, you're here <laughs> working so hard, but you no, know, we are from another world. Our problems are different ones. So, and then I, I was composing it and I thought, okay, and then the ensemble could be the part that are just always jumping on it. And they are, and they are getting more and more close to the cello player, player and they are copying his texture. So they are, and then they are playing unisono with him. And then I thought, oh, but somehow now we have the three people on the screens and this cello player alone, but I need somebody who's explaining what's happening here. And then uh, I've, I was thinking the best would be somebody from YouTube who's just uh, describing or reading perhaps a text about the norms. And then I found a YouTuber who was doing it in his car, you know, sitting in the car with a kind of a Krishna shirt. I don't know from any... Like, and then somehow this this builds up, no? So things from different media come together, and I'm, um, yeah, and, and then I'm work start to work. Okay, how to organize it? I need time code. I need synchronization. I need. Um, I want to bring the electronics with this together, and then somehow it's like um, composing by doing, no? mm -hmm. Something like this. Got it. And who are your uh, soul composers, soul soulmates? You mean the composers I admire, or I love, or I like, or 
you feel uh, that uh, you have some connection or 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 they doing uh, uh, the things which you like to do uh so yeah i feel a very deep connection to uh, george apergis for example let's say from the from another generation from the older generation um it was somehow I, I was also visiting him once in in paris and um when i was studying actually and i was there and then i had the chance to um to be there in a rehearsal he did at the ircom smoking his cigarettes and being i don't know it was I really like this music because it's so somehow very nervous. There is a lot of this person in this music. It's, it has this kind of, uh, yeah, it's so nervous and so quick and it can be very demanding and very annoying also, but in a good way, I think. And then he has, yeah, this um, this very beautiful pieces where he works with uh, media and with electronics and with uh, projections and um, like in Luna Park. So. I really like the situations he's creating. It's not so much about the if this language is the same language I would like to choose, but it's uh, the way he creates the situations I really, I really love. And I was a big fan of Heiner Goebbels also at the time. So let's say this is the kind of uh, generation which is um, about two, three generations older than me. And um, and of course, from my colleagues, there are a lot of colleagues I really admire, like uh, Michael Bayer. I really love his music, this kind of very playfulness, or also love um, a lot of uh, moments in Alexander Schubert's music, um, or also with Sergei Meingard. Um, there are other composers like Pauline Oliveros, I really love because it's very brave what she did when she was composing so many years ago. <laughs> Or also Eliana Radik. Also, if it's a that is a language that is, um, uh, I I would never have the patience for writing music like this. So my music is always there is happening so much because there are so many things I want to tell at the same time, and it's um, uh, very close always for uh, for an overload. And but perhaps this is why I really love this kind of drone music <laughs> to listen to. Uh, I really admire. And um, yeah, but um, yeah, somehow in this in this field, I think there are also others. I I don't. Yeah, I I don't get to right now. If you were a male, would your music would be different? I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so. I don't believe in the concept of male or female music. Um, I mean, it's also quite old. It was a kind of a try, you know. Um, I think, but there is something in music that can be from males or females or other genders as well um, that stands for power, let's say, or for uh, mightiness, which I don't like so much. So th th these kind of big chords, but I or the music of Strauss or of um, uh, this is probably in Strauss music like uh, in Heidenleben uh, when I was a when I was studying I took this piece and I worked on it and then did a new version of it um, there are gestures in music so which stay for could stay for power for presentation for egoness or yes yeah um but I, but it's it's hard for me to say this is male connotated or female connotated because uh, in the past centuries there were only male composers, most right. of them. So that's why we say, yeah, this is male. Somehow it could be male, but uh, I, today I also listen to it sometimes in in music from female composers, and I get bored of it as well. So it's um, this kind of this this year. So I, I feel it in, in both ways and um, yeah, or for both genders. So no, I, I, I won't write another music, I think. Right. If you would, um, if you would uh, born and live, for example, in, in Colombia, uh, in Bogota, would your music would be different? Would you as a composer would be different? Of course, of course, I think. Um, not only if I would have been socialized there, of course, everything would be different. 
But I also realized when I, for example, when my when I spent my time in Japan, or uh, my music changed immediately. Uh, also, I changed a little bit. So uh, always when I change the country where I am or where I'm working, I, I start to adapt myself to the environment. I don't know if it's because it's me or it's uh, just coming automatically, but I think it's because I'm always um, so curious about the environment and also to, I really like to dive into other uh, consciousness, let's say. And this means also into other kind of, uh, cultures because they tell us a different way of life or how to perceive the life around us and when I was in Japan I can say that my music changed when I was there so it um, uh, I thought about uh, uh, I thought about a lot of things um, differently so of course if I would live somewhere else my music would change as well and I would have I don't know. I think also the the songs that we have in our mind, which the songs, the music we grew up, it's so important. No, it would have also been differently. It was very interesting when I was in Egypt. Um, there was a kind of um, meeting they arranged, and there were some contemporary composers, me and someone else, and there were a lot of people from the from the south of Egypt or from the north of Egypt, older people, and they came and they were singing for us, which was a very touching moment, actually. And they wanted to share their traditional songs with us. And, and actually, I couldn't say if this was a song for the marriage or for the death, you know, or for the funeral, because, um, and for them, of course, they make big differences. Yes, of course, but that's a very funny song. It's, it's very... And, and I couldn't hear the differences. And I was very shocked by this moment that um, because it told me that uh, that even what we call uh, uh, minor, major, whatever, it's all socialized. No? Uh, because in this music, I, I, I had to ask, so is this a funny or is it a, a sad song that you were singing? <laughs> and, uh, you know, there I learned, okay, it's... Um, it's really all trained. No? Got it, got it. So music is a uh, right, uh, very let's say locative, not maybe locative, but location and social and cultural project, right? Yes, and music is also no language because it's no, it's also no universal language. So music cannot be universal. And also, I know when I'm composing and when I'm composing in reference systems so and I refer to other music so I'm always aware that even this music is a western music or it's non-western music then I have to think about what does it mean you know also who can understand and who can read my music actually uh, not everyone you no know? because um, if I uh, so I'm always aware so not everyone can read the let's say the um yeah the the reference by itself but uh and i'm i'm never sure how far does it go you know yes uh, so i know when i'm so let's say it's not about okay i'm i'm now i'm quotating this in this song uh from the baroque so and then um uh, it's not only about the special song that you have to know it so normally you don't have to know it but it's also about the let's say the the whole genre baroque music so who knows this genre is it a, a white music actually so um do people from really other countries and with another background understand uh what it means if i have a quotation like this in a, in a system so but i'm but i'm uh, quite aware of this so. but uh in that sense right you can say that uh, you are very very western oriented uh, composer because uh, you if, um, uh, you like references to social media which is uh, product of western society technology and uh, and uh, this uh, you know, social uh, uh, or community and uh, ideas this is very very uh, things what's going on I think I would say nowadays uh mostly right or not maybe mostly but let's say um 
are led by uh, uh, by uh, by uh, Western society. That's right, but uh, but I'm Western. Uh, I come from a Western country. I come from, so I don't have uh, any other roots. So, but this doesn't mean that I'm not. Um, uh, I think that, that I'm not working with material from other countries, you know, or in collaborations with uh, with singers or with musicians from other cultures. And I think this is very important. I mean, we have a big discussion about appropriation. Um, but I very often think that this discussion about appropriation is an appropriation by itself, no? Um, because in general, I think appropriation is something that is very, very important for every one of us. So we need appropriation to be educated, to raise, to, to uh, create our own personality. Appropriation is something that is very, very important and uh, also very important in art. It's only the question, uh, uh, are you aware of what you're doing no? when you're appropriating, um, let's say, music also from other cultures? In Archipel, uh, I did this uh, also. So I was uh, working with, for example, with Kechak, uh, which is coming from Bali. But the, the interesting story of the Kechak, it's a special rhythm. So which is uh, not only... Um, a rhythm it's also a dance but it was brought to Bali by uh, by Walter Spies so somebody who's coming from Germany who went there and who was uh, uh, who was um, collaborating with the artists over there and they were thinking about how to invent a culture for Bali because they didn't have some culture for the tourists how to sh right. like like a kind of a fake culture and so, so I worked a lot with this Kechak. It was like a very important material for the whole piece, the structure of it. Um, I think it's it's difficult if I just say, okay, I take some Kenyan drum rhythms and I work with them in a piece because uh, for me, it really needs a very, um, yeah, a kind of a collaborative thinking in doing this. So one is to do that you really do a research that you think about what are you doing there uh, with what kind of material are you composing um, and you cannot just take it. So no. Actually, well, I think West, Western composers will always be Western composers. No? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, 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 I can agree uh, of that. What do you fear as a composer the most? Of most? Yes. Fear the most as composer. Fear as composer. So, in the field I'm working in, it's some, it's a field where I think that not everybody understands it, yeah? because, for example, when I do a music theater like I did now, and I have quotations in it. Uh, or I work with um, with a piece which is very known. I start to like say, uh, yeah, I really work with this piece. Do um, do a new piece out of it. Um, then sometimes the question is here, yeah, but what did you compose? No, what's the what is the composition? And it's not your composition. It's something. Uh, it's already there. So and these are discussions. Um, uh, I don't I don't like so much. So I understand them somehow where they're coming from, but I think uh, this is something um, uh, which needs, I think, more time in contemporary music because music is always the last uh, genre in which uh, special changings are arriving. No, it was always like this. So normally it starts in in text and literature and then in the visual arts and then it comes to the music. So. Um, and working in reference system, working with existing material, doing something new out of it. Um, there is always coming the question, but is this still contemporary music? It doesn't sound contemporary in this way of, you know, or it, um, uh, yeah, there, there are sometimes coming questions and it's not a really, I wouldn't say it's a fear that I don't feel understand. You know? uh, it's just a pity sometimes I think that people don't understand. <laughs> and why you still compose? Yeah, this is I'm I'm asking this myself too. Why I'm still composing very often, 
uh, but I, I think I just need it. I really like to create something new and, um, and actually I think my talent is just in music. So, uh, to create something new and in music, working with the, the sounds and with the, yeah, with the people or collectives there. And, uh, I still think there is so, there are so many things we have to explore and that are new and we have to reflect also in music. And I want also the music to change. I want the theater and opera houses to change and to to program also more contemporary things. And I think for this, we have to, to develop more languages um, in the way of, um, uh, yeah, to think about what could be a contemporary music theater, contemporary opera um, today, no? Or what? what all could be a contemporary music theater. And there are so many tasks we have to do, no? We have these all these old opera houses and we have to think about how can we, um, uh, how can we create, let's say, contemporary pieces in these houses, no? Mm -hmm. And how can we use the spaces differently? And it's so easy to build something new and to say, yeah, we have a, a stage with this, which is uh, multifunctional so <laughs> but uh, a big task also how to carry the old the old houses and um to um, yeah to to create music which finds uh, also another audience and uh, now maybe not about your music but uh, about uh, general landscape of, of new music how what do you think how it changed how during this century changed uh, new music um oh there i think i think many big steps that were done no so the first big step and which is still in process is that uh the question of the masterpiece so that's the discussion which also arrived in the contemporary music so going away uh, looking for collaborative forms so it's very interesting because um uh, when i see my students now uh, and I'm doing this kind of seminars, which are more like open spaces where composers are and also interpreters, and they are trying new pieces or just try out things and work together. Um, that there's also coming up, um, yeah, a kind of collaborative thinking through composers. So it's not the composer, it's the genius, and it's creating the masterpiece, and which is, you know, disconnected from the society. So this is a big change because this was very differently in the 60s uh, and in the, still in the 70s. In let's say, especially in Germany, I mean, in the USA, we always had different developments. But um, uh, And then, of course, uh, the implementation of uh, electronics in the pieces and media, it's getting more and more normal, let's say. Uh, you can see it, for example, that there are many pieces which are now played very often, which are complicated let's say, which have um, advanced electronics or settings, and they are played more and more often. It's always this phenomenon, it's played once or twice, it's on YouTube, and then uh, it always encourages, also encourages young ensembles and other ensembles to do it also. Yeah, we can do it. We can do a piece with uh, sensors as well. So, um, and so on this side, I think this, um, the technology got more and more into the contemporary music and the third thing is that i think that uh this understanding what i was talking before so what contemporary music could be uh that this is uh, much more wider when i was studying i still learned uh octaves are not okay in contemporary music so and this is i mean how long it's ago it's like uh, 10 15 years ago and uh, this is now not anymore there. Let's say not in Germany. I think in France and Italy we have different scenes. No, we have another music in in Poland and Russia. Um, there were all you see. There are all specific developments. Um, in Italy, for example, the music is much more, let's say, uh, fixed to the score. It's in in Germany. It's not anymore like this. And. So you have the de different developments in the countries and um, yeah, but this kind of thinking what contemporary music could be, that could also be performance, could also be 
uh, this was always there, but it's getting it's increasing much more. So the pieces I'm I'm seeing as a, as a also as a member of, of different juries, for example, or uh, as a teacher, are much more uh, yeah free in this kind of thinking. I mean, yesterday I was in a I was in this uh, exam of a student of mine who did a two hour performance with uh, I don't know putting himself on earth, uh, throwing the clothes away. We had to do qigong all together. <laughs> it was a quite weird experience, but I must say. Um, uh, this is happening now as well in the contemporary music context. No? And uh, how audience of uh, new music change during this century? Um, actually, I don't know if it really changed the audience because it's still an audience which is um, uh, quite elaborated, I think. I mean, the big houses they start to to sell the tickets also for the abonnement audience um but um i don't actually think that the audience changed so much who is in the audience today i mean these are a lot of people which are interested in contemporary music uh very older people but also the younger generation uh i think this didn't change so much and how you see how uh... How you see uh, what is um, uh, what could be new music in next twenty years? I think that the contemporary music um, will have a big impact on the uh, on the popular music. So it's already happening, uh, and when we listen or when we think about the music that is coming up right now, you know, ex especially, let's say, in the queer community, um, then it's really, it's a lot of noise, it's a lot of roaring, it's very dark, it's, uh, it's very experimental. So I really could imagine that these areas are merging much more into each other, that there will be uh, one drive of the contemporary music, which is already now there, but it's still manifested in the contemporary music scene. That this will that this will merge much more into the, let's say, into the art space. Yeah, it, um, that it's um, yeah that this could merge also with the popular music. But it's not really popular. You know, it's it's also an experimental approach. This kind of electronic music. But it's uh, I think this will be much close to much more close to each other. And um, I guess so. This kind of uh what was once called classical contemporary music in a discussion let's say uh yeah contemporary music for orchestras for the other public audience and uh i guess this will just go on so and the, but that the audience will also get of course more used to the contemporary language i mean now we have a lot of britain benjamin britain in the uh uh, but also uh, Lachemann is in the abonnement audience. No? It's um, they're getting used to it, so it will be. I'm sure that it will, be, it will have more resonance in the programs as well. And what is the role of new music in in our societies? Um, For example, in German society, right? What is the role yeah. of new music in German society? What is the role? I mean, hmm, that's a. Or that's maybe a, there are no roles, right? Maybe there you know, are there no is a, there, the, That's also a dangerous question. Sometimes I think it's it's used also contemporary music is also used to, uh, to be a little bit chic, you know, to be contemporary. <laughs> it's used to hmm. be contemporary, <laughs> uh, because it, it by itself it has no other role than art has. So it has a role to reflect, it has a role to create spaces, uh, to think differently. So that's the role of contemporary music. But it, but sometimes I think, so especially in the German system and the German uh, support system for art, it's, um, uh, it gets more um, contemporary music as well as the art, but especially contemporary music has to fulfill special uh, goals of the government also, no? Like now it has to be, sometimes I'm asking myself, can art really be economical? You know, can art really be 
climate neutral. So is this uh, possible with art by itself or also with music by itself? I'm not so sure if this is the role of, of art actually. But um, um, yeah, and sometimes uh, I think it's a, a little bit too much that is given no, what contemporary music has to be. So, but um, yeah, but these two things has no role or it's used for a role. Yes. Uh, and um, last question. What would be your uh, suggestion to, to young composers who just start uh, their careers? <laughs> to young composers. So actually I always say, hey, I mean, not everybody likes to connect, but it's uh, it's good to connect, to raise things, to uh, to really dive into it. And always to think about it, nothing comes from itself. No? And uh, I really like to, to spread the ideas to, to build up communities. It doesn't mean that you always have to collaborate with others. So, but it, but uh, it's important to create uh, spaces, no? Because when people put themselves together, they are much more stronger. So, to form ensembles, to form groups, to to meet each other. So to uh, yeah, to really think about uh, about connection. I think this is the most important thing. So it can enrich a lot of things. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. <laughs>